Blog Talk Radio. Greetings, Hempster. Welcome to this inspirational hemp episode of Hemp Aware Radio. Tyler Hemp here, your hemptrepreneurial host, here to hemp power and hemp educate your hemposphere. As you know, it's important. We uh, love focusing on the benefits and uses of industrial hemp, especially for food and building homes, focusing on uh, aspects of clothing and energy applications and so much more. So thank you for investing your valuable time with us today. I think you're going to really appreciate this discussion we're about to have with a very uh, sweet gentleman, Corey Hughes, who I just had the opportunity to meet at uh, Hemp Building Summit in Ketchum, Idaho, of all places, which was an event that was put on by Hempitecture and the U.S. Hemp Building Association. And Corey and a few other friends of ours shared story and got to know each other a little bit. And um, that's when I learned that he's the founder of PIFCalifornia.org, which is a community-based nonprofit organization that's dedicated to the job growth and the economic development of the industrial hemp industry. And they're focused in areas highly impacted by the war on drugs. So by empowering California students with pathways in industrial hemp, PIF California provides great resources for California students in negatively affected communities to succeed anyway. So uh, Corey and his team have been working diligently to empower the community with their hemp building workshops and other educational um, materials. Uh, so to get right into it, uh, since I'm I'm super excited about the topic of building hemp houses, welcome aboard, Corey. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. So um, I'd I'd love to get a little bit of background about yourself and kind of how you led up to being introduced to the hemp industry and maybe uh, talk about what inspired you to create PIF California and what it is, what it stands for, and um, maybe talk a little bit about the hemp events and, and why you're so focused on, uh, you know, in, empowering students. All right. Um, I guess we'll start with why I uh, would let me just more in PIF California. Um, mm-hmm. About 10 years ago, I got my start in cannabis, uh, legal cannabis, the educational part. I would go around from state to state touring, giving educational talks about um, to the sick and shut in and entrepreneurs alike about how to get involved in the industry the legal way because it was a legal loophole that um, all states had um, if you were a patient or if you were someone who was sick or had some kind of chronic disease. So I would educate on that, and a lot of people – started just, you know, asking me to come to their state and this state and that state and spread awareness. And on my journeys, I really took uh, notice to the minority communities that were affected by the war on drugs and how they kind of had a fear of coming out to the events because they were just scared of this whole thing altogether. So it was so much money flowing into that. I, you know, I really wanted to learn how to get different, ethnic cities involved and um one day it just kind of hit me i was uh researching cannabis and i kept running across hemp kept running across keywords that had to do with hemp and then it dawned on me the different applications of hemp and how if it was a way to control the production of the plant you can give jobs for days to all kind of people that were in different kind of uh different kind of um, functions in society, like mm-hmm. accountants and truck drivers and uh, fashion, fashionistas, you name it. It was unlimited. Mm-hmm. And it, I just really took into account how cannabis, even though it was a very great opportunity for some minorities and some minorities, but not all, it was so many loopholes and so many, I mean, so many hurdles, I'm sorry, for them to go through mm-hmm. to get involved in the industry. And it was very limiting because it was a state to state thing. And from each, all states weren't doing expungements. All states weren't doing um, the the clinics where they do the, you know, all the, the cleanup. With the prescriptions. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All states weren't doing that. It was kind of like a state by state thing. And then that, you know, it even screamed out to me more about the opportunities with hemp because it was nationwide. All states, especially once it adopted nationwide, federally, all states can mm-hmm. connect and do something 
on the planet. It is like your skills in Kentucky didn't count once you went into Florida because it was only legal in one state. No, it was your right. skills in hemp in any state would cross over just like any other industry. So it really mm-hmm. like opened my eyes and made me want to get involved with the plant. Cool. So that's awesome. You, you started out on the med- medical side of medical cannabis and educating on that topic, but you found it was people were a little bit afraid to get involved and you wanted to make it easier and, and more accessible. And then you came across the keywords for industrial hemp and you saw all these amazing uses and the job potential. And so you, you decided to create PIF California. Um, what, what does PIF mean or what, what does uh, PIF stand for? What stands for pass it forward. Okay, cool. Pass it forward. Nice. Which the hemp yeah. plant is such a symbol of abundance and and giving. I mean, you you put one seed in the ground and you get thousands of seeds, you know, as a result. And so it it's, it it is such an amazing symbol of abundance. And so I, I'm really excited to see people like yourself that are helping raise awareness and educate the students because there still is the stigma that we have to overcome of you know the drug war mentality. So it's it's great to hear that you're you're focused on that sector. Um, so just to kind of regress a little bit and talk about, um, you as, as a child, I'm curious, did you know when you were younger, what you wanted to be when you grew up or did you have an idea like, this is what I want to be and is what you're doing today anywhere close to that? Um, they kind of run parallel. I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur because, Mm -hmm. you know, they had all the fun. They had all the freedom. They took all the risk, but that up and down lifestyle also provided for so many other things rather than that, you know, that, uh, I guess, how do I say it, that factory lifestyle where you go and do the same thing Mm -hmm. every day, every day, every day, and nothing changes. I just, I moved around a lot as a kid, so I I saw a lot of, I experienced a lot of change. So I don't know, I, I wanted a job that was parallel to the changes that I would experience every day growing up and just working in one place in a factory or something just wasn't it for me. Totally. I love that. Yeah. So your upbringing kind of developed in a way to, to inspire you to get into a similar field of entrepreneurialism. That's cool. So how how did you discover hemp building and, and is that kind of the main focus with PIF California or are you doing multiple things other than the hemp building workshops? Um, we're doing multiple things other than the hemp building workshops, actually. It's funny you ask, mm-hmm. but I'll start from the beginning. I got sure. I discovered um hemp building. I followed Sergey um are you familiar with Sergey Kalinkov, the yeah, uh, head absolutely. of Empire? Yeah, mm-hmm. I followed him a, a few times about two or three years ago, and then I reached out to him, and um, he, like, hit me right back, and he was, like, very interested in a lot of things I had going on at the time, um, well, all the time. I, I have a, a reach into the music world, and he's very interested in music for whatever reason, and uh, we had, like, a lot of different discussions about music and hemp and just life in general. And he was like having his first child. It was very mm-hmm. interesting time for him. And then when he came out here, he fi- I finally got him to come out here and I got him at uh, LA trade tech to uh, do a few events over there. And when I had him at LA trade tech, I also uh, introduced him to Snoop's um, producer battle cat and battle cat mm-hmm. was redoing his studio and um, Sergey got an opportunity to be involved in redoing his studio and his sound baffling hemp with um, his nice. products. Yeah, so it was kind of like, you know, yeah, dream come true. It was pretty cool. Very cool. So you, uh, so Sergey was kind of that initial, like, intro to the hemp building, and then you got him to come out and started working with him. Um, can you describe a little bit of, of how the events have evolved or what you guys are currently doing at uh, the hemp building workshops that you guys put on? Oh, yeah. Um, so the events are involved, I've evolved to more than events. Like how they go now, the, the structure is we have a hemp creep workshop with uh, students that want to be involved with some type of building 
whether it be hempcrete or traditional construction, or they're just curious. And we also invite the community out. Once the first workshop goes, we usually get five to ten people that are interested in taking it a step further and working on a live project with us. So we let them volunteer on a live project, and they usually get certified. And that leads to either a um, a spot at a pre apprenticeship at a local union. We have a couple of um, contracts in place where we have those opportunities in the areas that we're working on currently, like in Ventura County. And mm -hmm. um, another thing, uh, they get opportunities to work with us in the future, like a few students from Trade Tech, one of them in particular, his name is Anthony. Um, he got the opportunity to do what we do, what we did then, now for us at Trade Tech and the local Los Angeles Community College. It's pretty cool. So, you know, mm -hmm. the, he's the student coordinator for TIFF now. So we look for those opportunities awesome. for students also, students that are very interested and would like to take it a step further. We provide opportunities like that, either job opportunities or an opportunity within the organization or some type of leadership opportunity within the community where they can help other people get involved or identify people who might need green upgrades because we've been doing a lot mm -hmm. of those. Uh, yeah, where we go around and we'll retrofit a property that either was made before the 60s or before the last couple of codes and either it has toxic insulation or no insulation at all. Mm -hmm. Right. Awesome. So you're, you're retrofitting it with hempcrete? Yes. Very cool. Well, um, so you're doing these workshops, helping kind of create pathways, as you call it, for these students to develop a career in the hemp industry, whether it be hemp building or any other sector. It sounds like you're, you're really opening up the horizon for these students to find a pathway that works best for their skills, but particularly in, in the hemp industry, it sounds like. Yeah. You said it. Nice. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> That's yeah. great. So, um, yeah, go ahead. You want to say next, something else? Yeah. The next step would be for us um, with it um, to get more unions involved with the students that we uh, teach because they're really interested in, the, you know, getting permanent jobs and getting some type of job that's green and, you know, helping out the community. And also get more local contractors involved in the areas that we do work in, Ventura County and Los Angeles County. Um, they can go on PIF.org and reach out to us on the bottom and then put in their email and leave us a message or however. But we would really love to expand to Northern California where you're at and um, mm -hmm. just get as many people, as many communities involved as we possibly can. Um, we have awesome totally. educators we pull from, um, like, the Hemp Building Association. So we got, mm -hmm. like, some of the best of the best that are willing to work with us to go to these different communities and help train and teach students and the community how to give green upgrades just at the very minimum That's until great. we can get this put in the cold. Well, we'll definitely have conversation about this because I'm working with College of the Siskiyous in Weed, California, which is um, one of the uppermost cities in California. It's about 45 minutes south of the Oregon border. And um, the college there is – it's a community college. They're super excited. We're currently developing a course curriculum for a community course, non-credit course that people can take. And we're planning to have our uh, three-day workshop in uh, in the spring of 2020 – and so people can get certified uh, in the industrial hemp industry. We're going to, you know, cover history. We're going to co cover uses, current laws, kind of um, the existing marketplace and potential. And, and I think there's some really great opportunity for collaboration there. So we'll definitely discuss that. And hopefully PIF can uh, be a part of what we're doing there. I would love to. We happen to have a few tons of material up that way. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> we, would, we would love to be involved. Nice. Well, as a kind of uh, diversion and, and to regress a little bit on your um, background and, and who has inspired you, I'm curious if you have any mentors or teachers that, that are in the hemp world that you'd like to acknowledge or, or mention. 
Um, well, I don't really have any mentors or teachers, but I do have a lot of people in the hip world that are I consider peers, and I, I really dig them, like uh, Bob, the president of the Hemp Building Association. I, I, I really dig him and his son. Um, mm-hmm. I can't quite think of his son's name right now, but, um, yeah, him and his son, they are like an awesome team. Uh, mm-hmm. Eric, Eric. Uh, I think his name is Hold- Holdinger or something. Eric from Denver, from Colorado, okay. from the Hemp Building Association. Also, of course, Sergey. Mm-hmm. Sergey is like mm-hmm. you know me and him. You know we partners in crime. Um, totally. Um, who else? Uh, Tony. Tony's a very Tony from um, Hemp Protection. No, no, no. I'm sorry, okay. not Hemp Protection. I apologize. Tony from oh I can't think of Tony's company. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Sorry, but Tony. the guys in Hippotexture are Tony. doing good too. They're... Oh yeah, they I was I was definitely gonna mention Manny Me. I seen him um I seen him mm-hmm. um on uh Instagram thirty for thirty. Congratulations, Manny. So, oh, I know, I yeah, that that was company. Awesome. He was a, yeah, he was in a thirty for thirty. We're trying to get those guys out here. We have some projects at the top of the year in Ojai. And we're trying to get those guys okay. out here so they can um, show off their machinery and, you know, in a nice place like Ojai, we're a better place. You know, they can show off the machinery mm-hmm. and help us um, with one of these projects. But for sure, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, they're doing spray crete and, and uh, working with hemp crete just in the same way. But, like, yeah, they have this machine that they demonstrated uh, at their event, which was really cool. Um, but how does Piz California events differ? What what do you guys – can you kind of describe one of the events, like what what people can expect when they show up? Um, our events are kind of like TED Talks for um, the hemp building industry. And um, mm-hmm. we try to involve the community, and we try to focus on opportunities more so than, you know, highlighting the speakers. You know, the speakers are only there to paint a picture to the community, let them know what's capable and what's pop- possible instead of, you know, the, mm-hmm. the one-sided, oh, they can make clothes or they can make CBD or they can make food or, you know, just one thing. Like, no, these speakers, the speakers that I choose usually represent multiple facets of the industry, not just one. So That's great. And, yeah, and that um, – it really allows the students and the community to kind of like imagine all the possibilities. And then usually, you know, they approach the speakers or they approach some of the students that has been through the program and, you know, more opportunities spring up. Mm-hmm. Most deaf. Yeah. So yeah. Like networking opportunity, learning about multiple aspects of the industry, not just the building. It sounds like. Exactly. And in 2020, we're going to try to attack it a little different. We're going to, really focus on the communities that we're in, that the schools that we present at are in, and offer them and really try to get them to understand how uh, toxic uh, old school construction was and still is and how they mm-hmm. can get themselves green upgrades for a little bit of nothing, you know, not anything compared to what they would pay traditionally. A lot of people, right. um, especially older people with, like, weaker immune systems or – people who Mm -hmm. are sick from other allergies or, you know, that just have allergies in general, when they get sick, Mm -hmm. they traditionally stay in the house and, you know, lay in the bed and cover up in the covers, but they're laying in a toxic environment and they're just prolonging their sickness. You know, they really would need to get outside Mm -hmm. to get better, but no one's telling us this. If we insulate our homes with something breathable and fresh, you know, it can Mm -hmm. change a lot of things. Absolutely. You know, the homes, there's, Toxic building syndrome, I think they call it, with just full of lead and formaldehyde and volatile organic compounds in the paints and from uh, just glues and it's it's crazy how much uh, we're exposed to on a daily basis in our own homes. So I feel like this cause is one of the most important causes to focus on because they say you know peace peace starts at home and. I've I've always said hemp pays for peace. The more we can share hemp with the world, it's a way to pave the future with a peaceful, more abundant, wealthy, healthier, happier experience for all of us. 
you know, particularly like your focus on careers and job creation, it's 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 so crucial because people want to feel like they belong. They want to feel that they have a sense of purpose. They want to feel that there's there's you know something bigger than themselves that they're they're they work for each and every day. And um, hemp really provides that that sense of satisfaction and fulfillment. I think no matter what part of the industry you're in, just knowing that you're helping bring hemp or hemp products to the world, you're doing a really good thing for the environment and and for society, for our communities. So it's exciting to see it's finally coming to fruition where, you know, it's going mainstream and the laws are changing and we're able to build profitable ventures. So it's, it's exciting. I've, um, I've seen a lot of changes over the years, but this is one, one topic that's very important. And um, so, so on that note, like, you know, focusing on students, focusing on building in, the, in these events, what, um, what would you say are some of the most popular topics other than building that these students are, are most interested in? Or what, what sort of skills are they wanting to develop and how could those be applied to the hemp industry? I know it's kind of a loaded question. Well, I think I lost you. You there, buddy? Yeah, I'm here. You Okay, cool. I'm not you probably didn't hear my last question. Sound like it cut out. Well, what was it? Um, so with regard to your, you know, the students and and focusing on creating these pathways, what have you found to be some of the most popular areas of of interest uh, for for these students other than hemp building is there other topics or do you find these students are most interested in something specific when it comes to getting into the hemp industry or do they have questions on on particular areas more than others well it's uh it it depends on which college we're at like um some colleges focus on certain trades more than others like um I would say out of the colleges we've visited so far, LA Trade Tech would be the most diverse as far as the trades that they cover. And um, a big one was uh, the barber department was really interested in um, oil um, to uh, for inflammation around hairlines and um, and razor cuts. Hmm. Um, the so like hemp seed oil or CBD oil? CBD oil. Okay. Curious. Yeah. And the cosmetics department was really interested in uh, hemp topicals as uh, cosmetics. Mm-hmm. And the, the benefits that came from them, and they really wanted to try them out for a semester and, you know, kind of test them out on each other. Um. Yeah, the fashion department, they were interested in fabric and because they, they wanted to put on a hemp mm-hmm. fashion show and, um, mm-hmm. you know, really take advantage of the opportunity of hemp being grown in California and the, all the possibilities. Um, and then, of course, the architectural department and the uh, carpentry department, they were the, our main people that were involved in the hemp construction, the hemp creek construction. We were doing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so it so you know it it just depends on where what um the discipline is at the educational institute we visit and usually we can adapt because like we say hemp is so multifaceted we can adapt anything we do to whatever the educational discipline is at the institute we visit. Right, that's so true. Yeah, really cater to the specialty of, of the school it sounds like so whatever they're focused on you guys can help them integrate hemp into what they're doing or cater their skill sets and what they're learning to fit into the hemp industry yes and it's usually very easy for us to find the experts that want to help out or get involved or spread their knowledge to an educational institute so it's very easy to find the surveys of the world and, mm. and, you know, and tell them what's going on and, you know, for them to have interest and say, yes, you know, I want to help out. I, I want to teach. I want, you know, I want to learn, you know, and they usually come yeah. out. Well, right on. I, I really appreciate what you're doing with PiffCalifornia.org. Um, I just got a, a couple more questions and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited to 
have met you, Corey, and, and thank you for doing what you're doing. Uh, one of the questions that I'm curious about is what, what are some of the biggest obstacles that you have faced with either your events or just going to schools and, and, and discussing this with students? What would you say are some of the biggest obstacles and how are you overcoming them? I would say some of my biggest obstacles would be providing more diverse opportunities for the students in the community. Like I said before, um, we're hooked up with a few labor unions that want these students that's aware and that are willing to help learn and teach to older union members this new green technology and how they can save the planet. But at the same time, that's not only a few of them. It's not all of them. It's not as many as I could have. And it's, it's not a lot of contractors, you know. But I hear all the time um, the lack of new construction workers or the, the lack of turnover rate for these unions and how they need new members. But, you know, we're here. Mm -hmm. We're willing to work with them. We're willing to help them build their membership to help create new job opportunities for the students mm -hmm. and the community. And that would be my biggest hurdle right there. But through working with people like you and working through people like the Hemp Building Association, hopefully we can spread more awareness so people can't use the excuse of, well, oh, I didn't know. I didn't never knew. I never heard of you guys. Mm -hmm. So exactly. that would be it. Cool, man. Well, I think we, we're going to make some really good headway, especially 2020. This is going to be a huge year coming up. And, um, yeah, that that's awesome. I really appreciate you coming on. If you want to share any uh, last thoughts or uh, give a little plug, if you know what, whatever the best way to contact you, or if uh, you want to leave some final thoughts for the students that are listening in particular, words of encouragement, the the floor is yours. Okay, thanks, Tyler. Um, you can contact us at ihemp at pifcalifornia.org. Um, last words of encouragement. Uh, I mean, hemp can be implemented in anything you do, like anything, and it's totally legal. You don't have to hide. You don't have to duck behind the corner and not tell people what you're into or what you're doing. It can be uh, smokable. It could be a medicinal oil. It can be a topical. It could be a gel. It could be clothing. It could be plastics, building materials. It's limitless to what you can do and what you can get into if you want to enter this industry. There's more people like me and our organization is out there that's providing opportunities. I know um, uh, like at LA Trade Tech, there's a subcommittee, um, LIHA, L-I-H-A-H, LIHA. It's um, the mm -hmm. Hemp Twins. It's uh, two female students that we had the pleasure of um, working with early in our career. And they're doing um, all kind of other things with hemp and they're inviting other students to go on field trips with them and um, explore other building sites and go all over Southern California and even outside the state. So just anything, you just get on and search Instagram or Google and find one of these organizations and just inbox them. I'm pretty sure they'll get back at you and just get involved. Mm -hmm. Love it. That's, that's awesome, man. Well, thank you again. And thanks to the listeners for tuning in to Hemp Aware Radio. This is your hemp entrepreneurial host, Tyler Hemp, with Hemp Aware Radio. You can listen to other archived hemp episodes at hempaware.com forward slash radio. I'm sure you'll be hearing more from Corey on uh, Hemp Aware Radio in the future as we're most likely uh, going to be doing some cool stuff together this coming year and into the future. So thanks again, buddy, for being on the show, and I hope you all have a great week. Thanks, Tyler. Talk to you soon. All right. Blessings. See you, everyone.